The Benefits of Empathy The empathetic person takes on the feelings of another. When you act with empathy, you share emotions and feelings. Some people can almost physically feel what another person is going through. Others might have a less intense experience. In any situation, empathy helps you to understand and relate to others. It's a social skill that everyone should develop. Empathy can help you build trust in your personal and career relationships. Like sympathy, empathy means you feel bad about what someone's going through. Unlike sympathy, empathy always means following up with kindness. You do something to try to help the person get out of a negative situation or experience. What's really neat is that empathy doesn't just benefit the person on the receiving end of kindness. The benefits of empathy for the giver. Studies show that the empathetic person experiences less stress and anxiety than others. Everyone's different. Some people just aren't that empathetic. It doesn't mean they're mean people or that they don't care about others. It just means their emotional radar isn't as sensitive as someone who's highly empathetic. That's a shame because empathy lowers stress. Experts believe this is because of a shared emotional experience. It could be that there's a physical process internally that triggers the release of feel-good hormones and chemicals. Whatever happens, data clearly shows that if you want less stress, anxiety, and depression in your life, learn to be more empathetic. Empathy makes you grateful for what you have. Sometimes getting in the emotional point of view of another person can help you appreciate what you have. You see someone struggling emotionally, you ask a few questions, you get to know the situation, perhaps you were in a similar spot yourself at one time. You can identify very clearly with the emotional issues the person's experiencing. It causes such a response in you that you reach out. You feel compelled to offer assistance and to help this person in some way. After this experience has passed, it's not uncommon to feel gratitude. You're reminded when you've went through the same problem. You understand the individual you encountered is currently working through a difficult time. You additionally realize that you're fortunately not going through the same issue. This can cause you to take a little time and express gratitude for your wonderful life and all the blessings in it. Empathy is a boomerang. Act with empathy for someone else, and you're more likely to get the same response when it's needed. When people see you acting selflessly and with great empathy, they remember. Sometime down the road, when you could benefit from empathy, people will recall when you helped them or someone in their family. This could result in a wonderful boomerang of kindness that gives you assistance right when you need it. Empathy is often returned on the giver. It helps you grow emotionally and socially. You can improve your relationships at work and at home by showing a little more empathy. You also enjoy less stress and anxiety when you become an empathetic person. How to Develop Empathy in an Online World If you're like a lot of people, you probably spend some time online. Many of us waste a lot of precious time surfing the web. We know we should be doing something more productive, but it's right there staring you in the face. Besides, it's a lot more fun than doing the dishes or cleaning the garage. Spend too much time online and your life can suffer in a number of ways. You might find it difficult to understand the emotions or feelings behind what someone is telling you. They're not there in front of you. You can't pick up on visual, nonverbal cues as to the emotions the person is experiencing. Even when you can empathize with someone while communicating online, your responses are limited. You might want to help in some way. That's a key part of the empathetic response. It can be difficult to respond with kindness or care to someone who you're interacting with online. Fear not, empathetic person. There are a few tips that can help you put yourself in someone else's shoes, even if your interaction is on the World Wide Web. We'll share those with you in just a bit. Before we get started talking about empathy, let's nail down a good definition. The TED Talks website tells us empathy is the ability to recognize someone's emotions and put yourself into their shoes to create a positive outcome in a given situation. Now let's look at a few ways you can practice empathy in an increasingly online world. Turn to video. Body language can tell you so much about what a person isn't saying. Facial expressions and posture can reveal a lot about a person's thoughts and feelings. If you can, ask the person you're communicating with to jump on a video Skype call. They probably know how to video themselves on their smartphone. Communicating online often means a text-based experience. That doesn't help you pick up on revealing nuances in a person's voice or the tone they're using. A video chat reveals audio and visual clues to help you better understand the emotions behind what someone is saying. Ask pointed questions. 
Sometimes you get a feeling that what someone's saying isn't everything they're trying to communicate. If your relationship with this person is good, ask them if there's something else they're trying to say. Be very clear. Ask if there's something going on they want to talk about, or if you're just reading too much between the lines. Arrange a telephone call or physical meeting. Set up a telephone call. You're going to understand a lot more about the person's feelings when you hear their voice. You can also arrange a physical meeting if you think that's what's required. Interpreting what's posted in a Facebook Messenger chat or text message can be difficult. Did the person just make a snide remark? Are they telling a joke or are they being serious? It's tough to reach out to someone with empathy in some situations online. If you think you see a problem and can provide assistance, ask for some clarity. Let the person you're communicating know that you're there for them and willing to help. It's not impossible to practice empathy online, but you might have to work a little harder to spot an opportunity. If you want less stress and anxiety, learn to empathize more. Stress is a killer. You might hear someone say, the stress at my job is killing me. They could be overstating the situation. In many cases, though, stress can quite literally kill you. Chronic stress is related to the six leading causes of death. It's believed that more than 75% of all trips to the emergency room or doctor are stress-related. So the next time a friend tells you stress is killing him, you might want to take that statement seriously. Ask anyone you know and they'll tell you of a stressful situation they experienced recently. This is an unfortunate common occurrence. You might have too much stress in your own life. For a number of reasons, you can benefit from stressing less and relaxing more often. If that sounds like something you'd enjoy, just learn to empathize more. How Empathy Leads to Less Stress and Depression An empathetic person can place themselves in the emotional experience of someone else. That's the first part of empathy. The part of the empathic process some people forget is responding in a way that's helpful. You see a coworker has a huge workload. She's stressing out and you know there's no possible way she can hit a proposed deadline. You communicate to her that even though her productivity is excellent and she's a great worker, you don't know how she's going to get everything done. You just paid her a compliment. You saw her emotions were frazzled and she wasn't in a good place mentally. So you said something nice about her ability on the job. The next thing you can do after you identify with her situation is to provide assistance. Offer to help her tackle some of her responsibilities. When you do, your coworker will thank you. She'll experience less stress, and science tells us that she'll also have less stress, anxiety, and depression. When you learn to recognize that someone else is experiencing negative emotions, you want to help. This is the response for most people. What also happens is you subconsciously recognize that you're not in that situation. You can understand your coworker's emotional stress, but you aren't experiencing the same thing yourself. Dr. Jamil Zaki is a psychology professor and the director of the Social Neuroscience Laboratory in Stanford. He says empathy can help you see past the many differences people have. It helps you move past prejudice or bias. These are negative emotions. They can produce a stress response in your body. Empathy doesn't allow that to develop. Dr. Zaki also says empathy makes people happier in their relationships and even more successful at work. Studies show us that an empathic person learns how to process his or her own emotions properly by being able to recognize the emotions other people are going through. That means being more empathic in your life can not only help others, but it can also give you a wonderful boost of less stress and more peace of mind. How to teach children empathy and why it's important. Your children learn so much by picking up on the things you do. They're influenced by your every word, sometimes when you don't know they're listening. Your kids are always watching. They look up to you and want to do the things you're doing. This isn't always good. Sometimes you don't realize your children noticing your bad behavior. This is why you have to be careful what you do or say whenever your children are around. You probably understand this. Most parents do. And although you might slip up from time to time, you're usually pretty good about setting the right example. Do what I do is always a better teacher than telling your children to do something you aren't willing to do yourself. If you want to teach your children healthy empathy for others, you need to lead by example. By the way, is empathy important for your kids? What are the benefits of being an empathetic person? We'll answer those questions and then give you a couple of tips to help you teach your children empathy. The Benefits of Empathy for Children Empathy is important for a child's development. When he can empathize with the feelings of others, he understands that he's an individual person. 
He sees what someone else is experiencing, and though he understands those feelings through empathy, he recognizes he isn't going through the experience himself. Imagining how someone else is feeling in a particular situation can teach your children many different emotions people experience. Another reason empathy is important for kids is because it makes them selfless. You can teach your son that inviting a child to play when he sees they need comfort is a wonderful thing. Studies show that expressing empathy leads to less stress and depression. It can help your child better cope with his own feelings when he reaches out to someone else in need. Three simple exercises for teaching your children empathy. You can't teach this emotional skill too early. The more you display empathy yourself, the more likely your child is to be an empathetic person. Here are a few simple exercises to help your child understand what someone else is going through emotionally. One, ask lots of questions. Talk about your child's feelings and the feelings of others. Explain that everyone doesn't respond to a situation or event the same way. Then ask what a good response would be if she sees another child that feels sad. Two, practice what you preach. Empathize with your child. Look for opportunities to respond with care and kindness when your child has a less than positive experience. Three, make suggestions. You could say, why don't you let your friend choose one of your toys to play with since she doesn't have any of her own? Becoming empathetic teaches your children a lot. They learn that they are their own person, an individual. At the same time, they discover there are times when being selfless and sympathizing with another person is the right response. The best way to teach children anything is to lead by example, so look for opportunities to practice more empathy yourself. Empathy versus sympathy. What's the difference? Aren't empathy and sympathy the same thing? They're close cousins, but definitely not identical. They both have to do with making a connection with someone else. You recognize that someone's in a situation which is less than favorable. In both situations, you might feel pity for that person. The difference is that sympathy doesn't lead to understanding. Let's make the difference between sympathy and empathy a little clearer by looking at a possible situation you might encounter. Empathy, sympathy, and the homeless person. Homelessness is a problem in the wealthiest countries in the world. You may have encountered a homeless person yourself. A stream of emotions can begin flowing when you see someone in this situation. Harsh, mean-spirited people might say, Why doesn't he get a job? Most people will respond with more positive emotions. Still, others won't be driven to feel anything for the person's plight. Sympathy is an obvious response. You feel sympathetic. You feel pity for that person. You might not have ever been homeless yourself. Let's hope that's something you'll never experience. Even so, you know that living on the streets is difficult. Never knowing where your next meal is coming from, and whether you'll have a roof over your head at night, is a tough situation. You're sympathetic. You might give that person a few dollars or even offer to pay for lodgings and a meal. That's sympathy. The empathetic person understands what the homeless person is going through mentally and emotionally. It's as if empathy allows someone to enter the mind and the heart of another human being. You share that person's perspective. This is sometimes because you've also experienced the same situation, but that's not always necessary. Empathy can cause a similar response. In the example we just discussed, both sympathy and empathy can lead to a good deed. You want to help the person you see going through a tough time. One thing that empathy sometimes does is create an almost physical response in the empathetic person. You're at a friend's house, you're talking to him while he's dicing some vegetables, he slips and cuts his hand. Emotional empathy can be so strong that you actually cringe. You grab your hand as if you were the one that was cut, and you may even scream out as if you've experienced the pain he's going through. This doesn't happen with sympathy. A sympathetic person will still feel poorly that his friend cut his hand. Sympathy might make you rush to his aid. You ask him where he has a first aid kit in his home, and you get to work to provide assistance. In many cases, sympathy and empathy are similar. However, the sympathetic person doesn't truly understand and experience the situation someone else is going through. This is what happens with an empathetic person. They adopt the mindset and emotions of someone in a tough situation and feel compelled to provide assistance.